What is going on? What is going on? Happy Wednesday to y'all. As you can see today, we're going to be going over the BMW X5M, specifically the F85 version. So let's get into it. <laughs> so as you can hear, this is pretty rowdy. What do you guys think of pop tunes like these, like crackle tunes? I don't like them at all. <laughs> I think they're really obnoxious. Um, I used to think they were cool, you know, back in the day when I was, you know, a teenager. But even when I hear like a Eurus with these, it pissed me off. I'm like, this sounds so corny. Literally like popcorn. Right? Hey, shout out to you, Clara. What's going on? What's going on? Hey, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think I sound that great. <laughs> but this car does look pretty good. I like the satin paint or wrap. I don't know what you got going on. But the stance looks really good. Fair use, fair use, by the way. Yesterday, uh, fifth gear, as I predicted, uh, basically took the monetization for my video because I used a video of them or if the Tuareg pulling the 747. So, fair use, fair use. Don't take my monetization away. I need my dollar, okay? So, we're just going to be looking at some, like, tuned-up versions of the X5M, just to show you the potential that you could have with these cars. I do believe the value is really there. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> As you can hear, it's very popular to have verbal tunes with the S63. S63 being the engine. Twin turbo V8, 4.4 liter. trying to see this car. If you're just rolling in, let me know what you think about the F85 X5M. I think they're one of the best looking X5Ms. The design is so clean on these ones. Alright, we get the idea for that. We got so many other cars in these videos. What we got next? An interior driving video. Let's see what it looks like on the interior. Interiors on these are really nice, very clean. One thing I do like about these X5Ms is that they were pretty they were optioned pretty simply, and there are only a couple packages to get, and so it's pretty easy to tell the difference between all the different options um, just based on looking at pictures. <laughs> exactly. This is your compromised car when you're literally forced. You have to get something practical for the family. Get an X5M. She won't know the difference. Well, she might, depending on how loud it is. Shout out to everyone rolling in right now. As you can hear, the gear changes are pretty crisp, but this car does have an automatic. We'll get into that in a little bit. One thing about X5s is that they drive like cars. If you haven't been behind the wheel of an X5, I highly suggest driving one. Not even just an M, like any X5, it doesn't feel like an SUV at all. I think it's one of the best driving quote unquote SUVs because uh, they feel like cars. They're stable, they turn like cars, they don't have a lot of body roll, but that's kind of the same for all BMWs. They all feel really good to drive. But yeah, you can hear how, sh how uh, crisp those shifts are. For being automatic, that's pretty good. 
but again, ZF, so. ZF literally put the dual clutch transmission out of commission. Move on to another one. What we got here? Oh, dyno video. Yeah, exactly, Jacob. This is going to be a mall car. This is for the moms taking kids to soccer and whatnot, school. Definitely not an off roader. I love these uh these Meister shaft exhausts with the cut or I don't know what they're called, it's a flange in the middle. I think it looks so good. It's not bad honestly. Are these power numbers. Alright, stock 460 wheel, 453 wheel torque. With the exhaust, 472 wheel horsepower, 475 wheel torque. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, and we got one final video. Oh, no, we don't. That was it. Cool. All right, uh, let's get into it. What is going on, y'all? Whoa, hold up. Sorry, <laughs> camera was off. What is going on, y'all? On Warren Cars back again with another car buyer's guide today. As I mentioned before, as you can see on the screen, we're going to be going over the BMW X5M, the F85 generation. Um, Yeah. Great car. The values are pretty good right now in terms of, you know, what they compare to what you get. So, um, yeah, before we get into all that, don't forget to join the Discord. As you can see, it's starting to look a little bit more organized. We got Clara working hard with the uh, announcements. I really like these. Uh, very organized and it looks good. Um, yeah, join my Discord because every two or three weeks or so, I believe I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna do a giveaway. Not next friday but the friday after next for 52 dollars now because we have two people that uh contributed to the giveaway fund if you want an extra spot in the giveaway as in have your name in there more than once all you got to do is donate a dollar each dollar um, not only gives you an extra spot but also raises the pot for the final winning amount it's uh you know just to give back to you guys i'm not trying to take any more money from you if you want to give me money that's cool but if you want to enter in a spot specifically say um you know, this is for the raffle or the giveaway, and then I'll enter it. So if you, if you give $10 towards it, your name will be in there 10 times. Um, I don't know if that's the best thing, because someone could have like a, give me like 30 bucks, and now the prize is 80 bucks, and now the name is in there 30 times. So, um, well, I'll think about that. But if you donate to the pot, you will have extra slots for now, um, just because I said that's how we're going to run it this time. I might change it up for the next giveaway. But yeah, join the Discord. Also, in order to be eligible to win, you have to like the video. You have to comment on a video. And you have to, most importantly, subscribe to the channel. 82% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel. You guys come in, watch my videos, and leave. Just subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 1,500 subscribers. I'm at like 1330 or something. So almost there. Just help me out real quick. And also, hit that like button real quick before we get started. All you got to do is uh, hit the like button. It takes about a second to do. Cool. Um, yeah, follow me on my socials. Onward.alibujang on Instagram is my main one. And I also have Onward and Cards on Instagram where I just kind of post the same stuff. So you can follow me on those as well. Those links are also in the bio, the description down below. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for announcements. Let's get on to the uh, features, options, and problems for the BMW X5M. So let me bring these up real quick. So... Not much information. I mean, there's a good amount of information, but not a lot in terms of, you know, I would say like lore. I don't have much lore on this X5M. It's just a really good car. I mean, I can talk about it, but I didn't write it down. Um, but today we're going to be going over years 2015 to 2018. Very short model range for these for the F85 car. It uses the S63 B44 T2. So it's going to be a TU version of the engine 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. 575 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque, X-Drive all-wheel drive, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds, and uses an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. These cars are super fast. 575 uh, crank horsepower is insane. Almost 500 wheel horsepower. 
if you wanted to make these 700 crank horsepower all you got to do is get some down pipes and a tune it's that simple you can make big power with the s63 i love the s63 engine granted it does come with its fair share of issues but again this is a bmw so and kind of uh you take what you get with the bmw i mean they all have problems and all the problems are pretty much the same so it's not like you really get anything like a surprise if you know bmws then you know what to look out for um all the problems pretty much yeah as i mentioned go through all the engines um minus the newest ones i believe like the b58 is pretty reliable comparatively speaking to like these s these old s um uh, sorry like the n63 and the s63 and then the, um what the 55 n55 s55 did they make one after that no, i think it went from s55 to b58 anyway yeah so features basically it's four-door suv very fast on the road as i mentioned before x5s drive like cars if you've never driven an x5 i highly suggest you drive one they're very fun um and they don't feel that like it's really hard to describe there's just this steer it's a combination of the lack of body roll and the way the steering is it's just really good dynamics for an SUV, especially one that weighs this much. Um, I believe this weighs like over 5,000 pounds. Uh, but actually, let me let me get that weight for you real quick because I forgot to put that here. F85. Yeah. 4,600 4, to 51. 4,600 to 5,200 pounds this car weighs. So it's not a light car. So that's why it's so powerful. Um, that's why it's not under the four second mark for zero to 60 because it weighs so much, but it is still a very fast car. Cool. Let's get on to the problems. Um, so we can get to the ads. Been dragging out the shows the last couple of times. So I'm trying to, you know, speed it up a little bit because I know you guys are busy. So problems for the S63. Specifically, you're going to have Vano solenoid issues. This is going to be the variable valve timing system that BMW uses. Hey, shout out to you, Clean Whips. What is going on? What is going on? Shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to Clean Whips, Claro, Jacob Black. What is going on, y'all? Happy uh, to see y'all here. So, as I mentioned, Vano solenoid issues. It's going to be issues with the, the basically. There's two solenoids. They control the um, the valve timing, intake, and intake and exhaust. Let's say outtake, intake and exhaust. Um, yeah, these solenoids, if they fail, you're not going to have the best auto response. Your car is going to run a little bit rougher. The idle might not be. It's a bunch of different things. You're just going to have a malfunction of the engine. You're probably going to get a check engine light as well. And it will be intermittent. It will come on whenever, um, you know, you go from like one set of timing to another set of timing. So it's not going to just be something on all the time. Um, but if it is, you know, that, that could happen too. That just means it's really bad shape. You know, it's, it's gone down the line pretty far. And um, yeah, Vanos issue on every bmw just gonna have to deal with it rod bearings another issue on almost every bmw engine um this one's no different it's just the way they were made i don't know why bmw used uh these rod bearings that fall apart but it all comes down to your warm-up procedure with these cars most bmws all bmws you want to make sure that the engine temperature the oil temperature actually leaves the resting point before you even start moving I, some people actually wait till it's at operating temp before you start moving. I suggest not doing that. It's kind of just wasting your time. All you got to do is just make sure the engine has some heat before you start moving and then drive it under 3000 RPMs until it gets to operating temp. Then you can beat on it or whatever you want to do. A lot of people, they'll turn it on and just back out the driveway and dip. And then, you know, they don't really care. They're not really paying attention. A lot of people, you know, daily drive these to take them to work. So they, you can't always wait around for it to warm up you're always in a rush it's a daily driver so <laughs> if you want to uh, avoid rod bearing problems make sure your car is at least off the resting point for its oil temp before you take off and then um yeah keep it under 3000 as i mentioned before until you get up to regular operating temperature <laughs> clean whips you you're in a golf tournament i hope you won man i'm trying to be out there i've only been to the driving range really i've played golf probably like twice in my life but I need to learn because that's where all the business deals are made, right? <laughs> On the golf course. Um, oil consumption. Problems again. These are going to be BMW problems. Oil consumption. Um, it's a high strung M engine, S63. It's S engine. It's going to have oil consumption issues. It's just going to be a quart every 1500 miles, something like that. Turbos are going to be a problem too. So uh, make sure that the waste gates are good. If the waste gates aren't good, they could get stuck in either open or close or somewhere in between. And you're not going to have that full boost potential. 
Um, also, oil leaks, the turbo seals can go bad, allowing oil to get into your turbo and then it'll go out the exhaust and burn up in the exhaust system. You're going to have a lot of smoke and then you're going to have oil loss, which also is part of the oil consumption. The oil consumption is not only just natural with the engine, but it's also a f like what can happen if a bunch of these things go wrong. So oil consumption can happen if uh, your turbos are bad. It can also happen if your PCV is bad. PCV is bad. So this is the crankcase ventilation system. And so basically it allows um, the crankcase pressure to go back through the uh, intake and then back into the engine. So you have uh, basically the, the crankcase doesn't get too pressurized and it allows that um, some of that air to come back in and aid in the combustion process. The problem with this is that if it gets clogged, um, it will two this is a twofold problem. If it gets clogged, now the crankcase can't be ventilated, and now you have excess pressure inside of your crankcase, and then you can um, basically blow out all your seals. So you don't want to do that. Um, also, if your PCV valve is bad, it will start circulating oil back through the intake. And that is also a problem because you'll burn up your oil that way. And you also, um, you know, that can be, that can lead to oil consumption as well. Also, if your PCV is bad, bad um, this, I was skipping down to spark plugs. You're basically going to put oil into your intake and it's going to cover up your spark plugs. And then you can uh, basically foul your spark plugs and it will have misfiring issues and it won't run right. So PCV is a big thing. You want to make sure that works because if it's functioning improperly, you can have a whole slew of other problems. And then finally, you want to make sure that the car isn't leaking oil. Um, it's a BMW. It's going to leak oil out of every place possible. It can leak oil, oil pan, valve cover, head gasket, oil filter, housing gasket, front main seal, rear main seal, crank hub. Like <laughs> wherever uh, oil is around, it can leak to turbos as well. Um, intercoolers, um, oil coolers. I didn't mean to say intercooler. I meant oil cooler, transmission cooler. You want to make sure your transmission is not leaking either. Also, what else? Um, you want to make sure that... Uh, oh, yeah, your coolant's not leaking. These have plastic coolant systems. You want to make sure your radiator is good. You want to make sure your coolant expansion tank is good. Um, <laughs> it sounds horrible. No, this is a BMW. This is simple BMW stuff. This car is actually uh, not that bad when compared to other BMWs. For example, like the E70 or uh, E71, whatever the previous generation X5 is, that is way worse. This one is actually pretty stout and pretty reliable. These are just things that are common on all BMWs. <laughs> Everything leaks. Yep. I mean, that's how you know that you have oil in there, right? If it's not leaking, then uh, you're probably in trouble. Uh, let's see. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. It's BMW. Also, you're going to have drivetrain issues too. So this uh, tr cr transfer, I was about to say crankcase, transfer case issues are prevalent on X5s as well. So um, you just want to make sure that you get one that's in good shape, one that's been taken care of, um, which there are a lot of out there because X5Ms are, you know, I, some people daily them, but most people actually really enjoy these cars. So it's not hard to find one that's in pretty good condition. And also uh, you can tell by the ad, you can tell by the price. It's uh, pretty, it's not that hard. Cool. All right, let's move on to the final part, the options. Not too many options. I mean, there are a lot of options, but um, not too many in terms of writing them down. Let's see. Um, packages. Let me just bold this real quick. Cool. All right. So, of course, paint color. Then you have your choice between extended or full merino leather. Extended is just going to be on the top of the doors. Um, full is going to be on the bottom of the doors, the underside of the dash. The thing about the X5M is that it comes standard with a leather dash. So you can't just look at an X5M and uh, be able to tell whether or not it, ha or look at a dash and be able to tell whether or not it's full leather or not. Um, this is because, uh, yeah, they all come with full, they all come with a leather dash. How you can tell is going to be on the bottom of the door. There's going to be stitching. You can also tell because um, on the center console, like on the sides where you're probably your knees would be rubbing against is also leather as well. So just keep a lookout for that. We'll, we'll go all we'll go over all of that when we look at the ads. You also have an option for satin aluminum roof rails, satin aluminum line exterior trim. You also have interior aluminum trim, um, fine line oak wood trim, and then carbon fiber interior trim. So these are going to be your three trim options. You also have the option for parking assistant. This is going to be, um, you know, the 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 thing that parks itself. Basically, the car can parallel park itself. And uh, yeah, it's, you, it's a very common option. Actually, you see it pretty much on every X5M. You also have uh, the option for the surround cameras for the later model years. So I'll just break this down um, simply. In 2017 or in 2018, specifically, they got rid of the driver's assistance plus. They merged about 
three quarters of those options into the executive package and then made the rest optional. And so the parking camera is going to be one of those. Um, yeah. Bang & Olufsen sound system is also an option to look out for. I highly recommend looking for this because it's so much better than the Harman card in that stock. The Harman card in that stock is going to be a great system if you don't, if you can't get the Bang & Olufsen, but the Bang & Olufsen just is icing on the cake. It has the rising, um, it's not a tweeter. Oh man, what's like, what'd they call it? It's, it has a special name, but basically you have a rising speaker out of the middle of the dashboard. It looks really cool. Also, you have the option for the rear seat professional entertainment. So this is going to be those rear screens are not only nav screens are basically iDrive screens that control the same iDrive that the center screen controls and you're able to control the nav, the music, everything. Um, enhanced USB with Bluetooth and smartphone integration. You'll see this in the center console. This will be a place where you put your smartphone. It'll be like a little place for it. Night vision with pedestrian detection. So this is going to be a super rare option. Pretty much none of them have it because it was expensive and not really, not many people really needed it. But it, you'll be able to tell because uh, see, uh, it's really hard to see, but there's an X5M logo in the grill right here, right behind this chat. Um, and there's going to be like a solid piece of it with a camera, easy to tell. And then finally, you have the option between style 611 and 612M wheels. The 611Ms are going to be 20 inch wheels. The 612M wheels are going to be 21 inch wheels. So I highly suggest getting the 612 M's, but the 611 M's, you know, they, they pretty much all look the same. And then for the packages, as I mentioned, you have driver's assistance plus you have executive package, and then you have the M driver's package for the 2018 model year only the 2018 model year. For some reason, they included the M driver's package, which allowed you to have a restrict, a de-restricted top speed and also gave you some, um, some basically like a track day that you could go and participate in. So it gave you like the, the tickets, I guess, or the. Uh, the option i don't know it basically it, it gave you a track day you can use it once um yeah m drivers package you know it's whatever uh you can always get a d uh d de governed yeah the governor you can get a d governed anywhere after market um let me bring up the brochures real quick i don't have the actual brochures i just have the uh the pricing sheets but it will give you a quick uh, rundown on what's in the packages so um so I'm looking at the 2015. It's going to be the first model year. So we have the driver's assistance plus is going to come with blind spot detection. So in a quick way to tell if the car has uh, either driver's assistance plus or blind spot detection is that the center is going to have the hazard button. Um, you know, where the typical hazard button is in the center between the two vents on a BMW. Instead of just a hazard, there's going to be a hazard and the blind spot button. It's going to be two buttons. If there is no blind spot or no driver's assistance plus, it's just going to be the hazard. So easy way to tell. You also have the driver active driving assistant. Um, side and top view cameras and the speed limit info. If the car does not have the side view cameras or side and top view cameras, it means that it does not have the driver's assistance plus package unless it's a 2018. So I know a couple of them that we're going to look at. They don't have any uh, camera button. It's because they don't have the driver's assistance plus package. Pretty much every vehicle, though, is going to have the executive package, which is great because um, the executive package comes with a lot of cool things. It comes with a heated steering wheel, the soft close automatic doors, which I love. I love soft closed doors, rear manual side window shades, front ventilated seats, rear heated seats, adaptive full LED lights. Also a plus if you get a car without, especially an M car without the LED lights, what are you doing? You're kind of missing out on one of the best parts about the car exterior wise. Automatic high beams, heads up display and concierge service as well. We can see these are going to be your two wheel options. Let me zoom in here real quick. So uh, as you can see, all these standard options, lots of stuff in here that would be options on the regular F15 X5. Um, but they are standard, obviously, on the M. These are going to be two wheels, 20 inch 611s and the 21 inch 612s. Highly recommend getting the 612s. It's easy to tell the 612s because they, um, they have like a smoothness to them. The 20 inch 611s have like this jaggedness. And also the outside lines of the spokes are straight. For these ones, the outside lines of the spokes are wavy and it gets bigger as it goes out. So just a quick way to tell. Going through the 2016, we can see like nothing really changes for the 2016. It just uh, the way they set it up is a little bit different. 2017, they add some individual options for the leather. So if you want to get individual leather, um, you can get that in 2017 plus. The thing is, I don't understand individual leather because if you get individual, it has to be extended. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, um, you can't get full leather with Merino. 
I mean, you can't get full leather with individual, which doesn't make sense. I don't know why they do this. So if you want to get individual, you have to settle for getting extended. I'm sure there's a way around that, but uh, you really don't see much individuals interiors, individual interiors anyway. So it doesn't really matter in terms of the colors for the full for the leather. In terms of the colors for the leather interior, you have Silverstone, Sonoma Beige, um, Black, you have uh, Aragon Brown, so, uh, and Magello Red. Yeah, the option sheet for the car, this car is weird. Um, this is because it's not, it's an option sheet, it's not a brochure. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna just try to find a brochure because the brochures are way more interesting to look at. And I'm sure I can find at least one. It's just that sometimes the brochures don't have the options. So I, I went ahead and just got a, we'll look at a 20. Oh yeah. They don't have any, wait, they have an X five M brochure for the 2018 model year. Yep. Okay. So we're good on that. And yeah, see not, like they don't even say any of the standard options. They just say what the executive packages driver assistance plus, even though this 2018, for some reason, it shows it has the driver assistance plus, but this is an actual United States one. And as you can see, they dropped the driver's assistance plus package for 2018. Like this is a North America sheet. The thing is with these uh, brochures is that I don't know what country these are half the time. And um, yeah, they don't really show anything in terms of like the currency. So I don't know or any type of measurements. So it's hard for me to tell what countries these are for. And the packages differ between countries. But I mean, this gives you a good rundown of colors. So we got non-metallic alpine white, very popular color metallic. We got blacks, silverstone, mineral white, Melbourne red, carbon black, long beach blue, Donington gray, azurite black. Probably azurite black is one of my favorite colors, but is it is an individual color. Interior is where it really shines. You have so many different combinations for the interior leather. As I was going through the colors before, this is what it actually looks like. So we have black full leather, Simona beige full merino, full merino aragon brown, silverstone full. These are going to be your extendeds. And then red, obviously full. And then these are going to be your um, individuals only extended, which is very unfortunate. And then these are your trims. You have aluminum, fine line, oak wood trim, and then carbon fiber. I think my favorite, I mean, honestly, all three of these trims look really good. So, um, yeah, let's go back to that 2018 one so we can just discuss it real quick. And then we should be good. So, as you can see. The 2018, it has some of the lane departure warning, active driving assistant uh, stuff, but it does not have the active blind spot detection anymore. Also, Apple CarPlay compatibility becomes an option um, in 2017. So another thing I have to mention is that the iDrive systems changed. It was 2015, 2016, and then 2017, 2018 are two different iDrive systems. Um, the thing is that they kind of look the same and they have the same functionality, except 2015, 2016 had the 3G service. So you could do some wireless stuff with an app. And then the 2017, 2018 cars had 4G service. And what they actually did was they discontinued the 3G service. So you don't have any of that uh, wireless functionality with the 2015, 2016s with their iDrives. But with the 2017, 2018s, you still have that functionality. Um, also, with uh, the 2017 and 2018, you do have a Wi-Fi hotspot that comes standard with the car, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you also have wireless charging as well. So those two things were introduced in 2017, 2018. So you can say that the 2017 plus cards are like facelifted-ish. I wouldn't say facelifted or LCI, but they do have some updates in terms of the options. Just something to keep in mind. Um, for me, that would mean that I would get a 2017 because... The 2015-2016s are just not as good. But that's up to you. The 2015-2016s are going to be uh, cheaper. So it all depends on your budget. But that pretty much goes over the X5M. Not much I wrote down here, but I did say a lot. But anyway, let's get on to the ads. The best part of the show. Shout out to everyone in the chat right now. What is going on? What is going on? Let me read some of these real quick. Um, way too many cocktails. <laughs> that's the best part about it, right? You get to have fun while you're golfing. Um, poker, poker is cool. You guys watch it on. I don't really play. I don't really gamble to be honest, but I like watching it. Um, manager just bought the X760. Wow, that's a nice car. That is a really nice car. The X7. I need to do a video on the X7. It's just so new. I don't want to, but it's it's getting kind of old at this point. The X7 is a great vehicle. It's literally on par in terms of ride quality as a Cullinan, and no one understands that. Um, it's literally a baby colony when you think about it. it's BMW, Rolls Royce, or same thing. Even though the Cullinan, I know, is its own 
chassis, its own engine. It still has BMW insides and electronics. So it's you're kind of getting a baby calling it an experience, especially because the ride quality is that great. If you've never been in an X7, I highly suggest taking a ride in one. You don't have to drive it, just take a ride in it. It is one of the smoothest cars on the road. Um, <laughs> yeah, she has no idea how to drive it. Yeah, it's a big car. Um, yeah, brown interiors are going to be the best. We'll look at a bunch of different cool interiors for the X5 M. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see. So our first ad here, we have a 2015. This is going to be the first model year. We have one in this gray. It's going to, I believe this is that Donington gray. I like this color a lot. It's like a, like a dulled out champagne. We also have the 21 inch wheels here, the 612 M's. Let's look at the interior specs, see what we got going on. We have a black interior. This one does not have full leather, just an extended. <laughs> she was ready to give you the keys. What happened, man? You fumbled it. I'm sure you, got, you could have been riding around X7. Um, yeah, what I was saying. No, no, no full leather here. This has extended leather only. You can see the, the bottom of the dash is going to be in that elephant plastic stuff. It's like that soft uh, rubbery material. We can see back here though, it is an executive package simply because we can see the rear window shades and it also has the Bang & Olufsen. We can tell that because it has these silver speaker grills. So the only thing really this car is missing is uh, gonna be full leather. So, I mean, it's not bad. You can also tell it doesn't have full leather by looking at the bottom of the doors. Do they show the bottom of the doors? Um, well, kind of. You can see here that it is plastic. There will be a stitch going along that kind of matches these stitches if it was a full leather car. So what we have here is pretty much a fully loaded car, except it doesn't have full leather. Um, that's a big problem for me. I'm a big full leather fan. I would not get a car without full leather. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this car is everything else though. Bang & Olufsen, uh, driver assistance. It has um, it has the executive package. Hold on, let's look real quick. Yep, you can see the blind spot monitoring button right here. I mean, we already knew it had the, the driver's assistance because it has the surround cameras here. All these buttons, if they're all here, you know you have the driver's assistance plus package. If uh, or driver's assistance package, excuse me. Um, some cars you'll see it, they'll be missing some buttons here. It'll be blank one. If it doesn't, if it's missing any buttons here, that means it doesn't have the driver's assistance package. <laughs> cloth seats, yeah, not a fan. And that's why I like BMW. You don't get cloth. Well, at least in America, no cloth seats for BMW. For this one, they're asking $30,995. Not bad, honestly, this car is a 2015. High miles though, 91,600 miles. I say for me, being that this car is a first model year and it has 91,000 miles, I'd be willing to go up to $27,000 for this. And I think 27 grand would be a steal for a 2015, um, even though it doesn't have full leather. Cool, moving on to our next one. We have another Donington Gray one. This one's gonna be a 2016 and it has a little bit more miles. So. As you can see, the mileage uh, kind of plays a price, uh, kind of play, it kind of, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. The mileage affects the price, but not really. You can see this one's only two grand less and it has 20,000 more miles. So when you think about that, actually 30,000 more miles, that means if you buy a $90,000 car, <laughs> if you buy a 90,000 mile car, you could put 30,000 miles on it for the cost of $2,000, 2,500 bucks, quote unquote. That's how much the value goes down. So it's like, you can buy one of these cars, drive it for a year, sell it for the same price if you can get a good deal on the sale or on the purchase and the sale basically, or yeah, sale too, but mostly on the purchase. This one has the, um, this one has the 20 inch wheels. We can see these are the 611s. Let's look at the interior. We can see this one has the full leather though. Full leather, however, no Bang & Olufsen, which is a uh, womp womp, that's unfortunate. Uh, no Bang & Olufsen, but full leather, so it's kind of like flipped, uh, basically, compared to the other one. You got one thing, but not the other. We can see the full leather here. You can see the stitches going along this door. This part is all in leather. On the previous model, this one, the bottom half was in plastic. Let's see, though. Scrolling through. I don't really see much. It has carbon fiber trim, which I like a little bit more than the wood trims. This one is full leather. The full leather also comes with the Alcantara headliner, which is a key option to have cars with alcantara headliners look so good compared to just the regular cloth headliner the alcantara ones just add so much class also i do believe that when you have an alcantara headliner the sound deadening is just a little bit better everything everything is a little bit quieter because of how soft that material is so you have to get full leather you have to because that's the only way you can get your alcantara headliner 
But this one doesn't look too bad. The only problem is with this one, it doesn't have the Bang & Olufsen, which is a big uh, red flag for me. I wouldn't buy it just because of that. But to price it, you know, this isn't too bad. 121,000 miles, no Bang & Olufsen, but everything else, full leather as well. I'd say for me, I'd be willing to go up to $25,000 for this one. Twenty-five grand. Granted, the miles are pretty high, so you really want to make sure that you have the uh, maintenance history on point. Let's see what he has to say about it real quick. Um, nothing. Yeah, nothing about the maintenance history, so not a good sign. This guy might be wanting to dump it because he's kind of tired of dealing with the maintenance. So something you'll have to you know, take into consideration and ask the owner about yourself. Cool. Moving on to our next example, we have a white one. This one has some uh, aftermarket carbon fiber splitter and side skirts. Looks pretty good in my opinion. This one is in alpine white, it looks like. Let's see what he has to say first before we get into it. It's SE3TU, duh, 2016. So not the first model year, but it is part of the uh, pre-facelift uh, F85s. $4,000 in suspension, $6,000 in carbon pieces, $4,000 in new Michelin Sport Plus tires. Doesn't really matter. We don't really care about what you put into the car in terms of mods. We want to know about the car itself and um, the condition of it. The mods, they can add some value if they're good mods. I'm not going to say these aren't bad mods. The suspension, it's lowered. It looks like I'm not sure what costs 4000 If it's on coilovers, it's on KW. So yeah, KW coilovers. Those are good though. KWs are good brands. So again, when cars are modded like these, you want to make sure that the brands are good. And that you want to also make sure that you know who installed it. If he's installed it himself, is he qualified to install it himself? Are you going to run into problems in the future? It all depends on, you know, who installed it and what parts you're using. He said, if you want to get rid of the carbon parts and revert back to OEM suspension, it's not hard. So, you know, when people say something like that, just take all the parts you can. Um, don't ask him to revert it. Just take the car as it is and ask for the original parts with the car. Don't ask him to revert it because they're just going to take the aftermarket parts and sell them. And you could have sold them yourself. Um, exhaust engine, performance-wise, completely OEM. Um, he doesn't say anything about maintenance history, which is unfortunate, but it does look like it was taken good care of. Let's take a look at the interior specs who we're working with. I love these brown interiors. This out, what is this? Amaro, or whatever it's called. Brown interior looks really good. Hey, shout out to you, Bulldog. Haven't seen you in a minute. What's going on, man? You can see this one has a uh, wrapper on the steering wheel, which looks really bad. Holy crap, this looks horrible. Yeah, this is not very tasteful at all. But, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. I'm trying to see the lower part of the doors. Um, yep, we can see it is a full leather car, so you're going to have that Alcantara interior as well, or Alcantara headliner as well. Um, but, yeah, you get these Amaro brown seats. Amarillo? I don't know. What the what are these called, man? I'm, I'm blinking. Amaro? <laughs> Amarillo? Aragon. <laughs> That's what it's called. Aragon. I was geeking. Anyway, Aragon seats. Um, but yeah, I mean, not too bad in terms of the spec. White on Aragon Brown is always going to be desirable. White on Brown looks really cool. Also, these cars have nice interior, like, ambient lighting as well, which adds, you know, to just the quality feel. These cars are just really nice. They're just really nice for what they are. 40 grand is what he's asking. 100,000 miles. He's only asking that much because of the mods he installed. I'd say no thank you. 2016, 100,000 miles. I'd be more around the $32,000 mark. Are you talking about the Brown? Yeah. Yeah, I like brown. I mean, I like interiors that aren't beige or boring. And um, yeah, you can see this one looks pretty good. Zero issues. Engine has never been tuned. All maintenance done. So as long as he has the booklet of information and maintenance records, then you should be solid in this car. But again, if he's asking 40 grand because of the mods, he really likes this car. So hopefully that means he took care of it. But I would only be willing to go, I would only be willing to go up to $32,000. Moving on to our next one, we have a gray example, or like a dark silver. We can see this one is a 2017 with 78,000 miles, so lower miles, and the price isn't too bad either. 35.5 is what they're asking, so let's look and see why they're asking such a cheap price, comparatively speaking. We can see this one has, uh, it does not look like it has full leather. Just off the bat, I'm trying to see something real quick. Yeah, it does not have full leather. We can see how shiny the bottoms of the doors are. So no full leather here, unfortunately. It does have Bang & Olufsen. It has carbon fiber trim, and it is black. So kind of what we looked at first, our first example. You can see just not having full leather kind of takes a toll on the price. Clean title. <laughs> Sunroof goes all the way back. All right. that's If that's the highlight of your car, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, but yeah, sunroof goes all the way back, apparently, and that's, that's amazing. Um... 
we can see it's on the uh, 21 inch wheels so good wheels but the wheel condition isn't that great this car does look a little bit dusty when compared to the rest of the models we looked at um yeah this one is a 20 okay so I'll, I'll clarify this uh because it does look like it has the alcantara roof but i can't really tell but something about something like i feel like the 2017 2018s came with the alcantara roof just standard and the 2015 2016 only came with the full leather so i'll have to clarify me on that um but yeah you don't really see anything here i mean it's just it's a good it's a good car on paper however this is a car where the condition the quality isn't the best and so this guy knows it so that probably points also to the maintenance history the maintenance condition of this car is probably not in the best shape either so uh yeah you're gonna have to really get that squared away he says the sunroof goes all the way back that is the extent of the description of this car so i wouldn't really want to buy a car from someone like this would i buy a car with leather roof lining yes i would in fact i love a leather roof that's like something that you really only see in supercars like ferraris acid martins they have leather roofs bentley's as well and it just looks so good the only problem with leather roofs is that leather is really heavy and um alcantara is heavy too but um it will sag after a while you're gonna have that issue at some point and then you're gonna have to fix it but if you're cool with that, um, oh, also the F the F series M sixes also come with a leather roof. You can get it. it has like a leather stripe going down the middle. It's like leather and Alcantara mix. That is one of the coolest roofs I've ever seen. So um, yeah, you can get the leather roof on some BMWs, and I wouldn't, you know, speak against it. Leather roof is really cool. Um, it's just gonna fall apart eventually. You just gotta keep that in mind. But for this one, it is not in the best condition. You can see it's dirty. The exhaust tips are dirty. 35.5 they're asking 78,000 miles i say for me i'd be willing to go up to thirty thousand dollars i keep it at thirty thousand try to work with him from there i'll just use the fact that the car is dirty you probably don't have any maintenance records and um it doesn't have full leather so 30 grand and see what it is see what he has to say i don't know if i even want to buy a car from something like this this ad isn't the best looking ad this thing is just such a big red flag sunroof goes all the way back like this is an x5m <laughs> anyway moving on to our next one I really like this spec off the bat. We can see it's silver with the brown interior. We can also see it's on the 21 inch wheels. 2017, 74,000 miles, almost the same as last one. 36 grand they're asking for it. So let's take a look at the interior specs, see what we're working with, see what this car is missing. Uh, let's see. So off the bat, we can see nope, it has the Bang & Olufsen, has the Bang & Olufsen. It has full leather. It has the, oh, I forgot what the brown was called already. <laughs> the uh, Aragon brown interior so silver aragon brown bang and olsen it has the full leather carbon fiber trim what else can we see here driver assistance plus package parking assistant bang and olsen um enhanced usb this one is fully loaded the only thing that's the only thing this example doesn't have is going to be the night vision but again hardly any of them have the night vision i couldn't find a single one with night vision i don't think but this one off the bat is just really good. You have the Aragon Brown, carbon fiber trim, full leather. You have Bang & Olufsen, Driver Assistance Plus, Executive Package. Yeah, pretty much everything except for the rear entertainment and the uh, night vision. See what he has to say about it. Justin, currently going through our shop for VA safety inspections and emissions will be detailed after that. Donington Gray, Metallic, Full Merino, Leather, Aragon Brown, Driver Assistance, Bang & Olufsen. Exactly how it's presented. Not a bad car. This one's a really good example, actually. 2017, so you're going to get that latest iDrive as well. And it only has 74,000 miles for the price. Um, yeah. For me, I'd be willing to go up to 33.5 for this one. 33.5, and you can get a really, really good example of an X5M. Just make sure that it has, you know, the Carfax is clean. Stuff like this, you know, they could be trying to finesse the Carfax. Like, it has an accident, but still has a clean title. That always happens. Um, for me, it's not a problem. As long as it has a clean title, I'm fine. But a lot of people, they're really picky about their Carfaxes. They don't want any type of branding at all on the Carfax. Um, so keep that in mind. Cars like these where they're a little bit cheaper, but they are like they're deceptively cheap. You want to make sure that the Carfax is all right. But yeah, for this one, 33 grand would be a fire deal for a Donington Gray on Aragon. Full leather, fully loaded, pretty much. You're pretty much 90% of the way there. Anyway, moving on to our next one. We have another one. We have a lot of great ones today. Um, this one is going to be a 2017, 79,000 miles. They're asking $39,000. So a little bit more. Let's see why. Um, looking at the side, it has a 21-inch wheel, so that's good. Interior, though, I mean, it doesn't look like it's a full leather interior. Hold on. Yep, not even a full leather interior. We do have Bang & Olufsen, but uh, 
no full leather we can see the bottom half of the doors are plastic i'll say this some people actually do like the extended leather because this is where this part gets dirty a lot and you have kids stuff like that they're kicking the sides of the doors the underside of the dash is going to be also in this material so it's easy to clean that's the only reason why people get it but as you can see black interior very boring but standard what do they have to say fully loaded that is wrong you don't have full leather my friend you have bang and olsen system lane assist heads up display eagle eye camera eagle eye surround camera cooled and heated seats just say you have the executive package i guess i guess that doesn't really help a lot of people because a lot of people don't know what that is so i guess but say you have the executive package and then list what's in it don't just say these options like you actually option these yourself and then now it's a full option the car it's not you're missing <laughs> you're missing full leather you should get that on a shirt or something but it doesn't does it have full leather though because <laughs> that's like the defining uh that's the defining option for me if it doesn't have full leather i don't want it um yeah Jacob said, if you don't have kids or the kids are now adults, then I would prefer all leather. Exactly. The kids, a lot of people like use the kids as the reason why they don't get full leather. So this could be the car for you if you're, you know, if you uh, have some kids or you just don't like cleaning, you're kind of lazy, you don't like the nicest things. This, this could be for you. 39 grand they're asking, which is a lot compared to the ones we we're looking at. Again, it could be due to the car facts, could be due to some things like that you don't really see on the surface. Also could be due to maintenance. This one could have a lot of maintenance done for it that they're not mentioning so always always get the full story of the car one owner so that's also a really really good sign i always say with one owner cars they're really good for negotiation because the people who own this car have literally had it since new this car is eighty thousand miles it's uh 2024 it's a 2017 model they've had it for six years they've done a lot with it they're just trying to get onto their neck their next new car and so Often, if you come there, you look at the car, you present a good case for why you want to pay a lesser price, they'll often take you up on that because they're tired of the car and they've obviously spent a lot of money. Anyway, they're trying to recoup something as fast as they can. That's, uh, that's the case with most people who are one owner sellers. Um, just something to keep in mind. For this one, um, it doesn't have full leather. I'll be willing to go up to $31,000. Cool. Moving on to our second to last example. This one is going to be a, what looks like a carbon black car. I love carbon black. That's one of my favorite BMW colors. This is blue black color. We can see it also is on the 21 inch wheels, the 612 M style wheels scrolling through just a very clean example. This car was definitely washed and detailed before these pictures, unless that's just how he kept the car. I mean, it's low miles, so he might have just kept it this clean from the get go scrolling through though, looking at interior, we have the uh, Aragon Brown interior. Very nice. We can see it is also a full leather interior. Um, let's see some door panels. Yep. We can see the stitching right here. We can have the, we also have the rear window shade. So it's executive package as well. Just a very clean example. One of the lowest miles we've seen so far. So again, this would be something that, um, if you want the best one to get, you can see how much the prices go up with low mile cars. We're up in the mid forties already. Um, I just want to look at the interior one more time. Yep. Full driver's assistance, full driver's assistance plus package. The only problem with this car is it does not have Bang and Olsen. That sucks. Well, it's missing every, it has everything basically, but Bang and Olsen. Um, well, it doesn't have rear entertainment or night vision, but basically everything you need besides Bang and Olsen. Let's see what he has to say. Um, front camera, paddle shifters, <laughs> carbon fiber trim, parking sensors all around, Bluetooth, nav, heads up display is clean title okay yep so it has everything it's full leather but it doesn't have the bang and olsen unfortunately that's a big thing i mean if music's not your thing then it doesn't really matter or if you don't really listen to really like hard hitting music like you just listen to like like am radio or something you don't need the uh the bang and olsen but if you actually are an audiophile you like music um yeah you have to get the bang and olsen and yeah this one does not have it 45 grand they're asking sixty thousand miles i'd say because this car is really good condition Carbon black on the, uh, what you would call it, the brown interior, the Aragon brown. I keep calling it Amaro, Aragon. The carbon black on an Aragon interior um, with everything besides the Bang & Olufsen. I'd be willing to go up to 40 grand for this one. It is a 2018 last model year and it has 60,000 miles. 40 grand would be a really good deal for a car like this. Cool. And moving on to our last example, we have a black moving on to our last example we have a black 2018 x5m this one is going to be on the uh let's see what wheels these are these look like the 20s yeah these are going to be those 20 inch wheels 
going to the interior we can see we have the red and black two-tone interior this one looks really cool this is uh one of the options that only came in the 2018 year this uh black interior with the red accents you have the red stripes on the doors as well as the seat and then you have red accents on the center console very very cool uh interior combo let's see can we see the yep it's full leather as well you can also see it has the bang and olsen you can see the silver speaker grills here what else does this car have i mean it's pretty much as good as it's gonna get it's 2018 you have full drive assistance plus you have the upgraded i drive it's 2018 um yep executive package you can see the window shades pretty much fully loaded the only thing this car does not have is night vision and the rear executive uh, tv package so not bad at all Fifty-two thousand miles do they say anything about the car nope just what it has based on the option sheet 52,000 miles they want 50 grand for it it is a 2018 this one has every single option that you'd ever want i'd be willing to go up to forty-four thousand dollars for this one this one is actually really nice if you want you know the best of the best this is it right here and it's pretty cool when you think about it you can get a really really nice x5m with or like a low amount of miles for under 50 grand like what other car are you going to get a 2018 that has this much power and is spec like this with this low of miles for under 50 grand you probably get under 45 grand this one is just a really good example if you have the money yeah 44 grand is where i'd be at for this one right here moving on to auto trader the next place we look at ads we have another example we have another silver on uh did i already look at this one silver on aragon hold on no this one yeah that was a different example that one didn't have as many miles so this is a high mile silver on aragon car we can see this one's only going for twenty six thousand dollars and it has a hundred and thirty thousand miles pretty much Let's take a look at the spec though we have the donnington gray with the aragon interior I see the headliner right here. It's going to be a full leather interior too. We can see the stitching on the doors right here. Back doors as well. Let's see. Let's see. It is on the 20 inch wheel. So the 611 M wheels. And this is going to be 2016. So you have the older style iDrive. The screen, I believe, is the same. And it kind of looks the same. It has the same resolution. It just doesn't have that wireless capability or the wireless charging or the um, Apple CarPlay or the Wi-Fi hotspot. That all comes with 2017 plus cars. We can see it does have Bang & Olsen, though. What, what does this not have? Um, uh, I, I mean, I see the full leather. Bang & Olsen. It has executive package. It has driver assistance plus. It has a cool interior color. It has Bang Olufsen. It has everything really. This is pretty much a fully loaded car. One hundred and twenty-seven thousand miles, and they're asking twenty-six grand. That is, you know, that is a really good deal off the bat, considering what you're getting. You always have to make sure though the maintenance is good on a car like this. As I mentioned before, it's a BMW. Everything's gonna go wrong. So. Yeah, it probably hopefully with the mileage this high, everything that ha can. Sorry, I got like a stuffy nose. Hopefully with the mileage this high, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong with this car. So it's all fixed by now. That's something you really have to take into consideration. Let's see what he has to say about it. Trading looks like it dry, looks and drives like it has half the actual miles. So it's a trade-in. Um, yeah, no accidents at all. So this would be actually a really good candidate for me. I like the high mile ones. I don't really care, um, especially for cars like this. It's not like a super high strung car. It's going to be mostly used for daily activities so the high mileage doesn't really scare me especially if it's good mechanically uh, for me being that it has 130,000 miles if it was good mechanically sound i would be willing to go up to 23.5 for this 23.5 would be a fire deal for an x5m especially not even a first model year 2016 cool moving on we have another black example this one's going to be actually hold on, let me just moving on we have another black example it's going to be a 2016 x5m it's going to be on the style 611 m wheels the 20 inch wheels scrolling down we can see already it's full leather unfortunately it does not have the bang olsen system so it's either one or the other it seems like so we have full leather no bang olsen how about uh the executive package yep of course it has executive package i mean looking at the you can see the little hooks that gives it away off the bat and then in the center you can see it has the um wow i'm blanking holy crap 
what, what is this package called? Driver's Assistance Plus. Holy sh... Driver's Assistance Plus package. So it has Executive, Driver's Assistance Plus. It has full leather. Um, the only thing that's missing is the Bang & Olufsen. So not completely there. 31 to their asking 77,000 miles. This is a 2016. It's not too bad, honestly, in terms of price. 77,000, still under 80,000 miles. But that's in like the sweet spot with BMWs where it could mean that they haven't done... Because a lot of the things happen with BMWs is like 40, 50,000 miles. That's when you do your like first round of service. And then like 80 to 100,000 miles when you do your second round of service. And then everything above 100,000 miles. Like if you make it to like 110, 115, 120, you're pretty much good um, on paper. Like unless they really stretch out the service and it's in really bad shape, which you'll be able to tell. Uh, if you made it to 120, then you're pretty much good because they actually got everything fixed. However, in this 80,000 mile mark or right before 80,000, you got to be careful because it means that, you know, they might have had a lot of things fixed around 40, 50,000 miles, but then they are just trying to sell it now to get rid of it because they don't want to do that all over again. So, yeah, you're going to have to take that you're going to have to take that into consideration with cars like in the 70, 80, 90,000. Um 90 is like you can kind of bet on them actually fixing stuff at that point, but 70, 80 is a is a risky range in my opinion. That's what I've come to see. 31 2 they're asking. I mean, they're not far off. It's a low mile car, relatively speaking, low mile compared to some of the cars we see on the market. I'd be willing to go up to $28,000 for this car. It doesn't have full leather. So, yeah, 28,000 I think would be a fair. I mean, it doesn't have Bang & Olufsen, so 28,000 would be a fair price for this one. You know, I I'm not going to knock the Harman Kardon. The Harman Kardon system is really good on its own, so it's not that bad. If you had, we were in a pinch and you only had this example or you only had examples without Bang & Olsen, you're not going to be, it's not going to be like the end of the world. Moving on, we have a Thunder 2016. This one is going to be a red on red. Interesting spec. I really like BMW, the fact that they do this. A lot of car companies would not even release a red on red um, simply because it wouldn't sell. It's really hard to sell a red on red car. Um, but 2016, 97.1 they're asking. As you can see, red on red interior with the full leather, it looks like. Yep, full leather. We can see the red stitching on the bottom of the door here. What else can we see? Oh, it has the 21-inch wheels. We can see that. Full leather. We can see the headliner. This one looks really nice. I really like red interiors. I think they look really good, but you guys already know that. Red interiors are my thing. Uh, what can I see here? I'm trying to see whether or not I had the full yep full driver's assistance plus package Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I like the way this looks The red is so bright. It's like fire truck almost It's not like like a wine red or anything dark and boring like that It also has the aluminum trim aluminum trim with red is always such a good combo I think it's like really breaks up this red and black and aluminum. It just looks really good I really like this one off honestly 2016 97,000 miles and they want 35 for it, 34 5. You know, not bad. Let's see what he has to say. Title in hand, brand new 21 inch uh, wheels. Okay. Also has the 19 inch wheels with winter tires. Okay. So he has two sets of wheels, has the factory roof racks. Okay. That's also a good, uh, that's also a good option. But not really anything to say about the maintenance. It has 97,000. So you hope that a lot of things have been fixed on it so far. But you never know. You have to ask the owner and they have to provide you with actual evidence. Don't go off their word. Um, because then you're gonna have you paying for that later But yeah, this one is not bad at all. I really like this one red on red pretty rare spec 34 5 I think for me granted this has Wait, did it have Bang & Olufsen? No Bang & Olufsen full leather, but no Bang & Olufsen. I'm willing to go up to $30,000 for this one Cool moving on to another example. We have a 2018. This is gonna be a last model You're one of the most expensive ones. We looked at so far 15,000 miles. So this one is basically brand new and they want 60 grand for it. So let's see if it is worth it. Let's take a look at the spec. See what we're working with. It is a carbon black car, it looks like. It's that blue black color. Let's see if they actually say. No, it just says carbon black, or it just says black, but you can sell it's carbon black. It's not gonna be um, an actual true black. Okay, where's the interior pictures? We can see it's also on the 21 inch. We can see also it's on the 20 inch 611M wheels. So not the best wheels. But, I mean, as expected, the interior looks immaculate. 15,000 miles. It doesn't even look like anyone even drove this car. Beautiful red interior on this one. What else? What else? You can see it has Bang & Olufsen as well. Full leather. Bang & Olufsen. 
It has the executive package, obviously. Let's see, hopefully this thing loads. Um, yep, you can see we can see it has the uh, window shades here. So it is the executive package. Um, and then obviously, we, well, I'm assuming it has a driver's assistance plus package simply because I do believe I saw, um, I saw the full range of buttons in the center console. But, but it's hard because it, you don't get a preview when you look at these ads on these weird. I don't like how Auto Trader has a separate place, like a separate website called Auto Trader slash Marketplace. I don't get it. Like this is for private sales, and then they have like these regular ads for dealers. Even though some people put their private sales on this, like this one right here. I don't understand. I don't understand the separate website. It doesn't make any sense. I don't like the way it formats. I don't like the way it loads. So Auto Trader, you gotta fix this. Make it load the same way as this. Make it consistent. Um, oh, I was on here. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, do they show yep full buttons here you can see the uh, blind spot monitor here as well so fully loaded car 15,000 miles basically brand new fully loaded last model year as well this is the best one you're gonna get and only 60 grand these these uh, vehicles were over a hundred thousand dollars brand new so if you're getting a brand new one for 40 percent off it's not bad at all um, you'll have to see whether or not these things are still in warranty uh, because it's a brand new car and it is an old car, that is also an issue that can happen. It can fall out of warranty and now you're stuck with a brand new car and you're going to have to do all these maintenance things that normal people who bought them car bought the car new would have had the dealer take care of. But now you bought this car new six, seven years later, you're going to have to deal with all this stuff. So make sure that the warranty is still intact. Um, it comes with two free oil changes. So that's not really a warranty. So basically, this car does not have a warranty, and you are not, or you are basically on your own if you buy something like this. Uh, yeah, that's not a good. That's not a good thing um, for me because of that. I'd be willing to go up to forty-eight thousand dollars. I think forty-eight grand for a car no warranty would be great. But if it had like a good warranty on it, maybe forty-four. I mean, fifty-four. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, sixty grand for a brand new BMW X5 M. So you're, you're doing pretty well. Moving on to our last example, we have another 2018 last model year. This one's gonna have a little bit more miles, 83,700 miles, and they're asking 38.9, so almost 40 grand. But this is the last model year with under 100,000 miles, so you're not too far off. Interior wise, we can see, uh, we can see Bang and Olufsen. We can see executive package. What else can we see here? And see, it's also full leather. They show the headliner too. Um, yep, full range of buttons as well. So. Full driver's assistance plus. Most of these have a. I've actually, I believe I had one that wasn't driver's assistance plus, but the ad was so bad that I just kind of tossed it. Um, but yeah, all of them pretty much are going to be fully loaded. It's all about the full leather and the Bang and & Olufsen and the wheels. What does this have? So this has the 21 inch wheels. So pretty much everything. Bang & Olufsen, full leather, 21-inch wheels, executive package, driver's assistance plus, black on black. Not bad. 38 grand they're asking. I mean, fully loaded, 83,000 miles though. I told you earlier, this is that weird spot of mileage where you really need to be careful. They don't say anything about the... Um... Wait a minute. This isn't even X5M. Unless they're geeking. No, it is an X5M. What are they talking about? See, this is what I'm talking about. Who writes these ads, man? They really wrote this wrong. Our 2015 X5, X Drive 5, or X Drive 50. It's an X5M, my guy. <laughs> it's not, a, a, you put the power, like, whoever wrote this just, you know what? <laughs> With something like this, what you gotta do is be like, oh yeah, like, um, you price it at this. You have to get to me. But they price it as an X5M, but they wrote the description as an x 5 x50i so um that's unfortunate anyway give them a slap for that yeah i would say try to lowball them because that's what i was trying to say lowball them because they they have the description completely off but the price isn't low at all they didn't put an x550 price that would have been like half this price um yeah for me though being that this is pretty much fully loaded last model year i'd be willing to go up to uh maybe i'd be willing to go up to 35 grand for this one 35 grand Cool. All right. Moving on to the last place we look at ads, car gurus. We have our first example. Oh, man, I did this. Uh, actually, let me fix all these ads first because I don't believe these are fixed. Oh, 
that one's fixed 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 all right cool so we have our first one here this one is going to be in this blue color i really like this blue very uh very m blue a lot of you see a lot of x6 m's in this color but the x5 m looks really good too what is this blue called man i'm, I'm uh, forgetting off the bat it is long beach blue that's what it is so long beach blue x5 m they're asking a hundred <laughs> they're asking they're asking 26 grand, but it has 140,000 miles. So one of the highest miles ones we looked at so far. This could potentially be a deal depending on, you know, what the condition is like, interior cosmetic, as well as the mechanical nature of it. We can see off the bat that it does look pretty worn. The interior does look like it's seen better days, especially the seat. The bolster is all messed up. Plus, it's the light beige interior, and it's not looking as beige as it should be looking. This part is looking a little dark, so it's not the cleanest either. This one, though has night vision which is crazy you can see it right here night vision this is what it looks like little camera right underneath the x5m very rare option but it also has the rear entertainment does this have full leather please don't tell me this doesn't have full leather <laughs> i don't think it does it does not look like it has full leather they don't show it mm. I can't tell. I can't tell. I cannot tell. Oh, it does have full leather. Thank God. Okay. This car is pretty much, not pretty much, this car is fully loaded. This is the first fully loaded car we've seen so far. So, what does that mean? It has the executive package. It has the driver's assistance plus package. You can tell because it's a blind spot monitoring. It has the rear entertainment package, these TVs that allow you to control the iDrive. They allow you to control the radio. They allow you to control the nav. They allow you to control basically anything you control from the front screen. Um, it also has full leather. And it also has night vision. So pretty much every single option. He said, but it has tan. Yeah, I know. I'm not really like a big fan of tan, but I do like tan when it's this two-tone tan. Like you have two-tone, you have black roof and everything. If it had a tan roof, then no thank you. And a tan dash, then no thanks. Like if the upper part was tan, maybe not. Um, but it's mostly black. Yeah, you can never, this is the, the thing about looking for cars. It's like, they're not all going to be the same. And it's going to be really hard to find the exact spec that you want. But this one is pretty much all the way there on paper. The color might not be what you want. But for me, I think this Long Beach Blue on the beige isn't a bad color combo at all. It's pretty classy. Very Miami. So it would do well down there. This one also has a ton of miles, though. So I don't even know if it's the right one for anybody. 140,000 miles. They want 26 grand. I mean, it is a fully loaded one. You won't really see any other fully loaded X5Ms. But the, this mileage is insane. You really want to make sure that the... The maintenance records are there. Do they say anything about it? Nope. <laughs> they never do, man. Um, so yeah. 140 grand in terms of mileage. $26,000 they're asking. I'd say for me, I'd be willing to go up to $22,000 for this. And I think twenty two dollars for a fully, fully, fully loaded X5M, even with night vision and rear entertainment, twenty two grand. That is a steal. Um, you're just going to have to get these seats reconditioned or something. I don't know what you're going to do in terms of to fix these seats. Maybe steam them, get them to be like tight again. I don't know how that works, but I'm sure you can do something. Especially with all that money you saved. Moving on to our next one. We have a 2016 BMW X5M. Um, yep, in black with the 21-inch wheels. We can see here the interior. Look how much better this interior looks. It looks so much more smooth and nice. The other one just looked like oily and dirty. Um, no harmony or excuse me, no banging olfs in here, unfortunately. We can see also. Um we oh, here we go. This one does not have the uh adaptive god how do i forget these packages so fast this one so this one as you can see does not have the driver's assistance plus package it does not have the camera button here and it doesn't have the blind spot monitoring button here it's just the one solid uh, hazard button so the first example we've seen so far that does not have the um, driver's assistance plus package very interesting 2016 um, Harman Kardon, so this is actually really base when you think about it, so no Bang & Olufsen, no Driver Assistance Plus. Does it have full leather though? No full leather either. So this was the most base one we've seen so far. If you want a base X5M, this is the one to get. <laughs> um, you do have the 21 inch wheels though, and it is in uh, you know a nice color. It's in black. So you have a nice base. Uh, you have a nice base version right here if you want a base version. However, the price is not base at all. $34,000. And you're missing a ton of good options here. Um, and they want it has 69,000 miles. 
So not the most amount of miles. However, you're not. So not the most amount of miles, but you don't have any options. I say for me, because it doesn't have any options, um, and it has 68,000, almost 70,000 miles, you're almost in that weird spot. I'd be willing to go up to $29,000 for this one. Cool. All right, moving on to our next one. We have another red example. Scrolling through. Uh, oh, let's start over. Moving on to the next one, we have a 2017 X5M. This one is going to be another red example. Um, scrolling through the pictures, we got a bunch of different pictures of the same thing. Uh, <laughs> we see it has the 21 inch wheels. Moving on to the interior, we can see that it does not have the Bang & Olufsen. It has the Harman Kardon system. Um, no full leather either, so no full leather, no Harman Kardon. So no full leather, no Bang & Olufsen. Let's see if it has uh, the Driver's Assistance Plus package. Uh, let's see. Yep, we can see here Driver's Assistance Plus because it has the split button here in the middle. But again, it's going to be a white interior. This is that Silverstone interior. What do you guys think about a Silverstone interior? Would you get a white interior? I wouldn't. I think these would get dirty really fast and they stain like from jeans and everything. No thanks. Um, yep, no full leather here, but it is Executive Package. And it is Driver's Assistance Plus. We can see the full range of buttons right here. Um, and it has the carbon fiber trim. So not a bad spec here. Um, you're just missing the full leather and Bang & Olufsen. I mean, not. Nah, it is a bad spec, let's be honest. <laughs> no full leather, no Bang & Olufsen, but it's in red. 36.5, they're asking, and it has 68,000 miles. So this is the 2017, though, so you, do, are, you are getting that new iDrive with the 4G capability. And you are also getting the wireless charging. You're also getting the CarPlay. You're also getting the Wi-Fi hotspot. So a lot of good things come with the 2017 that, uh, you know, the last full, the fully specced one we looked at was a 2016. So you're not getting the full experience, even though it is fully specced on paper. 68,000 miles. They're asking 36 grand. I'd say no thanks. This is uh, way too expensive, even though it says it's a great deal. 2017, um, without the full leather, without the Bang & Olufsen, it's not a great deal. This would be a great deal with those two options. But without them, I'd say I'd be around the $32,000 mark. Cool. Um, yeah. Moving on, we have our second to last example. We have a 2018. This one is going to be in that Donington Gray on the 21 inch 612 style wheel, 612M style wheels. Scrolling down, we can see it is, uh, oh, it does not look like it's full leather. Nope. No full leather here. No Harman card in here. Wow. No full leather here. No Bang & Olufsen here. Has the Harman Kardon system. Does it have the Driver's Assistance Plus package? It does. That's good. See, so you can see that blind spot monitoring button here as well. So Driver's Assistance Plus Executive Package has a carbon fiber trim as well, but it doesn't have the Bang & Olufsen. It doesn't have the full leather. And you know, the color is okay. I mean, it's gray on black, so pretty standard. 64,000 miles, and they want 39,000 for it. This is a 2018, so the 2018s are going to have a little bit of a premium in terms of price. So I'll give them that. I say for me, though, um, it doesn't have full leather. It doesn't have Bang & Olufsen, so I can't pay 40 grand for it. I'll be around the 33, I'd be around the $34,000 mark for this car. 34 grand for a 2018, not bad at all. And then we have our final example. We have a 2018. This one is going to be in Silverstone Metallic. This one looks really good, actually. Silverstone is a great color, great BMW color. Scrolling through, we can see uh, no night vision here. So uh, moving to the interior, we can see it has a red interior. Let's take a closer look. We can see it's full leather as well. We got the stitching down here. We also have the Bang & Olufsen system. Carbon fiber trim on this one. Red seats. Got the bloody guts. And then, of course, it's going to have the driver's assistance. Plus, it has to. Yep, fully buttoned here. So, pretty much fully loaded. The only thing we're missing is going to be the night vision and the rear entertainment. Yep, no rear entertainment. But I don't really care for the night vision. I don't really care for the rear entertainment. That's up to you guys. Um, this one is just a really clean example in terms of the color spec. I love Silverstone on red. Silverstone on red is one of the best color combos, in my opinion. Um, you know, up there with white on red. 52.7 they're asking and it has 35,000 miles so this one is also relatively new under 40,000 miles do they say anything about the vehicle okay cool so you say something you see something executive package uh merino okay um yeah not really anything about the maintenance history unfortunately pulling back up i mean this is just a really clean car like look at the seat condition Actually, the seats look a little bit worn for 35,000 miles. <laughs> that is kind of weird. But we can see here, 
every single option that you can think of. 53 grand, 35,000 miles. I'd say for me, being that this is the last model year 2018, that means you're getting a new iDrive. And this one has all the options you want, minus the rear entertainment, minus the night vision, but all the real options that really matter. I'd say I'd be willing to go up to $47,000 for this example. Cool. All right. That wraps it up. Shout out to everyone who stuck around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the X5M. Let me know what you guys think about it. Would you ever cop one? I think they're really, really good deals in terms of this. You can get the X5M. You can get a Range Rover SVR. You can get an F-Pace Type R. What else could you get? You could get a Raptor. Um, But these, like, they're the most luxurious out of all of them. They're most the high performance. They have the best uh, driving feel out of all of them. They have the most pedigree. They have the nice interiors. Like, you can't go wrong with the BMW. It's just, like, it's, like, nines all around. Like, some cars where it's, like, they may be really good at something, but not good at other things. The BMW X5M is just good all the way around for an SUV. You know, split tailgate. Like, you have a bunch of cool different features. Lots of room. A lot of cool different color combos you can get as well. And the features also, you know, are unmatched. You can get pretty much every single safety feature. Every single, like, the speaker system is really good. Can't go wrong with the X5M. If I were to get one, I highly suggest getting a 2017 or later simply because you're going to have that upgraded iDrive and it's just going to be a, a newer vehicle. You don't want to get the oldest one possible. Like, don't get a 2015. 2016 is maybe if you can get a really good deal like that. Fully loaded 2016. If you wanted a fully loaded one and it had good maintenance or you, you know, owned a shop or something and you were very savvy with BMW repairs, then that high mile one would be a really good deal. You can get them in the low 20s um, for a fully loaded car with night vision and everything. Like, what car is night vision that's 20 grand and it's not like an old S class, you know, it's like a 27, 2016 car. It's a modern car and you're getting for 20 grand and it has almost 600 horsepower and it's an SUV and it has night vision and it has rear seat entertainment and it has a bang and Olufsen. Like you can't go wrong. Like the amount of tech and options that come in the X five M is unmatched. And for the price, you know, you can't go wrong. I said that already, but yeah, get a 2017 plus, but if you're in the budget or if you don't have the budget, get a 2016, don't get a 2015, never get the first model year of an M car. That's when they were working out all the kinks. But yeah, colorways, obviously you can go with every work. It seems to me, <laughs> seems to me that silvers and the Donington grays are going to be the most common colors. So if you want a common color and you want to blend in, get one of those, get a black. Uh, but if you want something more special, you do have the Long Beach blue. You do have the red. You have, um, you know what? Let's look at the colors. You have the Long Beach blue. You have the red. You also have the, um, the silver stone metallic, which is a really good color. And also as a right black. That's also a nice color as well. So a bunch of cool colors that you can pick from. Just stay away from the um, Donington Gray and maybe the blacks. Like these two are going to be the most common. And then just kind of get the rest of these if you want something more special. But it doesn't really matter. If you can get a good deal on the car in terms of spec, then uh, colors for me is like the last thing that I care about. I would like it to be black, um, but it doesn't really matter to me. If I can get a good spec and it's like Donington Gray or it's silver or it's Alpine White or whatever, I'll get that one. Interior, uh, brown or red for me. Those are the two options I would go for. These two ones, the the uh, the Aragon brown or the Magello red. You also get the Sonoma beige. That looks good sometimes, but up to you guys. A lot of people don't like beige, but definitely get full leather. Definitely get full leather. This individual stuff is annoying, especially because you don't get that Alcantara headliner when you get the individual. Um, that's what they say. It looks like Alcantara in the pictures, but again, sometimes it doesn't feel like Alcantara when you like actually touch it. Cool. You guys don't have any more questions. Hey, shout out to the seven people in here. What's going on? What's going on? Um, what's what's what am I gonna do tomorrow? Oh yeah, if you haven't liked the video, hit the like button real quick. I got seven people in here. Hit that like button. I don't know why you haven't already if you didn't. Also subscribe if you haven't, because I'm trying to hit 1,500 subscribers in like the next couple weeks or so. A couple, I'll give it a month. In the next month, by um. Actually, by my birthday. My birthday is on May 5th. Get me to 1,500 subscribers before my birthday. Um, yeah, what are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow is a special day. We're, <laughs> we're going to be doing the V8 4Runner. One of the most highly sought after 4Runners. Highly sought after Toyota trucks is the V8 4Runner. So we're going to be doing that tomorrow. And uh, hey, shout out to DJ Inferno in the chat. What is going on, man? DJ Inferno. And um, yeah, if you ever liked the video, like the video. Subscribe comment in the chat if you're watching it live if you're not watching it live chat down below you leave a comment uh join my discord the links in the description again i'll announce this one more time if you join my discord 
then uh, yeah, you have the eligibility to win $50. And for every dollar that is donated um, through YouTube, I will be adding that dollar to the pot. So right now it's at $52. And Claro and um, Claro and Jacob both have an extra uh, spot on the raffle. So because they donate a dollar each, um, if you want to donate and make the pot higher, just say so when you donate it. I also have a cash app if you don't, you know, there's a cash app there if you want to use the cash app because if you aren't familiar, YouTube takes 30% of all super chats, which is ridiculous. 30% like you're already not paying me for the ads, really. You're going to take away 30% of my super chats. That's crazy. So I'm kind of, you know, spending money on my own money, even though it's 60 cents at this point. But it just shows like it's not about me. It's about the channel. I'm trying to grow it. Cool. All right. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. If you haven't already liked the video, I said it about four times already, so you better like the video by now. And yeah, that wraps it up for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow with the V8 Forerunner. I forget what years those are. It's a little bit older, but it has a V8. As you know, most Toyotas, all Toyotas, don't have V8s anymore. They use twin-turbo V6s for the highest output motors. And yep, the V8 Forerunner is uh, one of the more reliable versions of the Forerunner. And just a lot of people like it for off-roading and then, uh, you know, building them out so we'll go over that tomorrow i'll see you guys then hope you guys have a great rest of your wednesday and thank you again for watching i'll see you tomorrow